first glimpses of these red cliffs. This is a very unique part of this beach. Good morning guys from Barra de San Miguel. We took a couple days off. I wasn't feeling well. I think I had food poisoning or something like that, but feeling better today. We are going to continue our road trip, but today we're going to go around the area, go to some of the beautiful beaches around here, and then we're ending up in Maceo, which is maybe like a 40, 45 minute drive from here, and that should be very cool. First beach we're going to, Praia da Gunga. Ah, we're excited for this. We haven't seen some beaches in a couple days, so we've heard that these are a couple good ones. Okay, so we just made it to the beach, and for this beach, it is 20 real. Uh, 20 real, which is like four dollars. So, a little expensive for a parking lot. I think that's the most expensive parking lot we've been in yet. So, hopefully it's worth it. Okay, we're here. Let's go check out Praia de Gunja. So when you walk in from the parking lot, you first get where all the people are. Basically the tourist trap of the area. But from what we've seen, there are some more beautiful natural parts. And that's what we're going to look for. We saw some pictures of these red kind of cliffs that are right by the ocean. So that's what we're in search of right now. But as we're looking at this beach, it is completely lined with tons of palm trees. Hundreds, thousands all around us. So I think the tide is a little bit low right now, which is cool because you can see these rock formations in the middle of the ocean. It creates this nice sort of swimming area because the rocks block the waves from coming in. We've heard a lot of things about this beach. When we first got here, we didn't really understand why, only because all we could see was the umbrellas and chairs and tons of people. But we walked like five minutes further down. And this is gorgeous. One of the prettiest beaches we've seen so far. It is pristine. Nobody over here. We still don't really understand why everyone hangs out in this tiny little space and then there was nobody over here in the most beautiful part. Not one person. Just us. Just two people. Looks like we found what we were looking for. So we can see the first glimpses of these red cliffs. This beach just keeps getting better and better. So these red cliffs that we see, they're probably about a 30 or 40 minute walk from the main section of the beach where everybody is. So a lot of people probably don't even know that this is a part of it, but it looks like it's a very special and unique part of this that people should know about. And so if you come here, make sure you just go on a little walk to the right when you get to the beach to get to this spot. We did see some ATVs driving down this way, so it's possible you could pay to do an ATV ride there, but I don't know why you wouldn't just walk for free on the beach because this is So Lindsay and I were just having a debate of how far these red cliffs are over here. And if any of you have ever looked at like a piece of land over water, it might, it seems like it appears closer than it actually is. Something that you think you could probably swim to in 10 minutes or walk to in 10 minutes sometimes is actually like an hour away. And this isn't just the case with water, it's also when you're in a vast space like on a hike you might think that a mountain is closer than it is. But there's something about water that you have nothing to show you what's close or anything in between you and where you're going, so you can't really tell how far away it is. 
So, so when we first saw these red cliffs, Alex is like, this is going to be a really far walk, probably. We don't know how far it's going to be. And we took guesses on the times. So far, he's right. Uh, we already passed the time, I guess. I always tend to underestimate how long things will take, and he seems to overestimate. Or estimate right. Or estimate right. <laughs> but I think neither of us are going to be right. So far, we've been walking for 25 minutes, and it does look like we're almost there, but who really knows? All right, timer's up. We're here. How much? How long did it take? From last time we talked to you guys, it took 15 minutes, and we're now here. And from the start of the walk, we've probably been walking for an hour from where we saw all the people. And here it is. Worth it was it. still worth it. Yeah. contrast with the blue water is so cool. So we've probably been to 20 or 30 beaches now in Brazil and a lot of them kind of started to look the same and we thought this would be like that but because of this area it made it a little more unique. If we had stayed just where everyone else was it was still beautiful. A very turquoise water here that looks great but this is a very unique part of this beach and now we really like it summer so we are here at the hottest time of the year pretty much it is devastatingly hot when you're not in the water <laughs> when you're walking on just a trail like this with no trees to be seen until we get to the palm trees up here so we actually just took a quick dip in the water we didn't show it but it was really needed and I think we're gonna go in the water one more time but it's probably gonna be back a little bit toward where the people are in a new area where it was just lined with palm trees. There are so many ATVs here. I think we've seen a hundred at least just drive by this road. On our walk back we're going to take the path below the palm trees so we can escape the sun for a bit. You have to apply sunscreen pretty much 24-7 here if you don't want to get burnt. That's a tractor full of coconuts. Going back to the beach.
I'm gonna eat my words from earlier and say that I know why people take the ATVs. It is way too far to walk there and back. So the best way to walk there and get an ATV back. Let's get some water. After about two hours in the sun, we are out of water. We need some coco gelato. They're cracking open right now. so dehydrated after that. Mm. Never let yourself get dehydrated in Brazil. You need to have water with you at all times. Okay, we've gotten back to where most people spend their time at this beach. And look at the difference from where we just were. So many people. This is the most crowded beach we've seen since Rio, I think. It looks pretty fun though. You can go out on rafts like this with a group. You can take these flying apparatuses that have a fan on them that push you. You can take speed boats, all these different things. Alright, let's go test out this water. You can see right through it. Really clear water. It seems a little colder than the other ones, but not by much. They're taking off. Very cool beach experience. We are going to go to Maceo now. That is where we're going to spend the next two days. We heard they have a cool market there, so hopefully we get to see that. Otherwise, it's just a cool little beach town. We don't know much about it, so we'll have to see when we get there. postcards from around the world. Right now we are writing and drawing on postcards from all around the world. And if you want to support the channel and become a patron, then join Patreon down below. So in the description you'll see Patreon, and it's there that you can join where you can get postcards like this. We're going to write on them for you, and you might even be able to get some small souvenirs from everywhere we travel around the world. So, Patreon down below. Thank you to all the patrons who have already joined. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this one, click one of these. And make sure you subscribe right here because we're traveling all around the world and we're sharing the whole thing with, with you. And we will see you in the next video.